Hey, how's it going? It's Nancy Gammon. Thanks for visiting. I had a good time talking all about creativity with my friend, Dr. Mary Lou Davis. She was teaching a course on the topic at the time at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I've edited our conversation into three videos, and this is the third and last video in the series. Today, we're talking all about how sharing our personal stories in our creative work can lead to surprising and rich connections with other people. We're also talking about the value of not getting things exactly right and the beauty that lies in imperfection. So you're invited to listen in on this conversation already in progress. It, can you pick out a particular time when you were proud of your creativity? I can, and, and I feel lucky that there are several. <laughs> um, I think I think I'll choose to talk about um, since we were talking about personal narrative art, or I was. I'll talk about that piece, and this was a piece that told told the personal story of growing up looking for a husband, and all of the relationships that led up to that. So it's a it's a very layered piece of of images of, of stitched portraits that have have kind of this depiction of a person and then maybe a two sentence summary of that relationship. And I thought if when I was growing up, I had a bulletin board and every guy that I dated or was influential in this process, I stuck their picture on the bulletin board what would that look like? And so the first image um, depicted my playground boyfriend from fourth grade who, who gave me a heart um, pendant that he found on the playground. Uh, and it turned out I was his second choice. He had given it to it, offered it to another girl who had turned him down. Right, and then he gave it to me. So I was my my first boyfriend's second choice. <laughs> um, so that's the text that's on that little piece. So, and there's they're they're made on makeup remover towelettes. Oh so, wow! So they're about this size, um, and each one has a fabric portrait that's stitched on it, and then the text. And so I just layered, layered, layered all of these influential relationships that led up to finding someone to marry. So it is, some, some things were one, one date, some things were boyfriends, um, some were just very good friends that, you know, in hindsight, it's the kind of thing you see in a movie or a book where like, that was the that was the guy right you know they were your really good friend that's who you should have chosen but you you know oh they're just a friend and you move on you date all these other guys so for me it was quite a journey so I can't remember how many are on here 70 it is a lot of layers and the reason that I feel proud of this is because of a, it was, it was just very naked. It's, it's a very honest thing. They're all true stories. Um, not all of them are very, very pleasant. And so what I didn't know when I made this piece was how it was going to connect with people. And that has just been so rewarding that when this piece has been on exhibit or when it's been in my studio and people have come by, it's interactive, so they can lift, they can touch and lift the pieces to read the stories. They're only pinned at the top, like it was on a, on a bulletin board, so they can lift the layers and see the stories underneath. Just the conversations, I mean, women mostly, you know, but just all of a sudden, they have their own stories to tell, and they're telling me about their playground boyfriend, or they're telling me about um, you know, if they had a, a slip to put up there, what would it say? And things like this. And that was really my first piece of personal narrative art. And after that, I was hooked because of the way it connects with people. And so 
you know, usually you meet somebody and it's, hi, you're, what's your name? Where do you work? What part of town do you live in? And it takes so long to get to the good stuff. And when you have art like this, just all of a sudden, bam, you're straight into this narrative about this junior high boyfriend or this conversation about how can we help our daughters make better dating decisions or things like this. You're just like right into the humanity and the the commonality of our experiences and the confusion of growing up or or this idea you know that we're supposed to get married and what does that mean to be a young woman and try and find a husband and things like this and so I continue to feel uh, very proud of that piece and really enjoy the times that it's exhibited and I get to connect with strangers and have conversations. Wow. Wow, you are telling me things about art that make me really excited to do more. I, I've never thought before about personal narratives being ways to, that you could use visually to spark similar conversations. Um, it, it, it ties your work to much um, higher transcendent goal um, mm. of connecting. And I have a sense that's important to you. I think that it is. I, I think, you know, it's wonderful to leave behind beautiful images that last, but it's really, it's really our stories that connect us. And any art piece that we see, we have some kind of response to, whether it's hmm or eh or oh my gosh, you know, it, there's some kind of a reaction and, and every now and then you, you know, you find some piece that you, that you connect with for some reason. I think that connection is, you know, one of the things that helps make the world a better place. And I think that by being brave in telling our own stories, it lets other people be brave and tell their stories too. It's kind of like giving permission. Here, I'm just sharing this crazy personal thing and and all of a sudden it allows someone else to say oh my gosh I had this experience and you know and here here's what happened in my life or yeah very cool I guess the last question that I have um is what is one of the most important things you've learned about creativity I think the most and this will just tie back into all the other uh, question answers, but I think the most important thing is that beauty lies in imperfection. I grew up in a 4-H family where our projects were judged. And so you, you sew something and a judge turns it inside out. You know, how do your seams look on the inside? Is everything lined up perfectly? And so I really grew up in an environment where creativity was judged and got a ribbon. And so it was a journey to let go of that because I certainly got to a certain point in my life where I realized I was very thankful to have those standards and to know how to do it the quote unquote right way. However, it really was holding me back this idea that things needed to be done perfectly and that they needed to be constructed in this certain traditional way that followed these rules. And I sat down at the sewing machine and just moved the fabric back and forth because, as a way of breaking myself from it has to be straight and it has to, you know, you always want your seams even. And I did that again and again and again, just deliberately moving the fabric back and forth. And it, I'm going to say it took a good year, year and a half of experimenting with looseness before I started to feel comfortable with that. Because I mean, it just, I don't know how many years, 45 maybe, years of kind of this internal 4-H judge or this, or my parents' voice or whoever's that things needed, needed to be perfect. They need to be high quality. They needed to, to follow this way. And it, it is hard to let go of that kind of training when it's 
comes early and is repeated often. Uh, and when you repeat it to yourself in your own head in the absence of anyone there to do it for you. Perhaps um, the most, most influential. <laughs> yeah, and so now, I am, you know, really have gone the complete opposite. I so vastly prefer the rawness, the looseness, edginess, things that are free, things that show the artist's hand. I have no interest in things that are tight and clean and exact. Um, so work that is photorealistic, I had, you know, I can appreciate the time and the skill that went into that, but I want to see your hand. I want to see what's in your, you know, what is in your brain? What makes that image differently? Because it came through you, not how, how can I, how can I make this look like a photograph? You know, that for me personally, that's just not, not as interesting. And so, um, sometimes I bump into people who, for whom this rawness and texture and, and wonkiness is very uncomfortable because they're still at a place that I was at. They have worked very hard to follow these rules and to do high quality, crisp work. And it feels offensive to have somebody breaking those rules and doing things wrong and they feel angry. And I totally understand that because I used to be there. And so even though it looks like they're being very critical, like I've had people say things like, this is the worst sewing I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I can say, you know, I totally get where you're coming from because I used to feel exactly the same way. And here's what happened to me. Here was my journey. Here's how I changed, you know, and here's where I'm at now. And maybe that shakes something loose in their brain and maybe it, it doesn't. Um, and it's certainly fine for us all to have our own ways of creating things. And if it makes them happy to make really tight, concise work, then, you know, for heaven's sakes, that's exactly what it is that they need to be doing. But for me, it increases my enjoyment exponentially to not have those constraints. And it really, it stemmed from an experience at a museum where it was in the, the uh, a display about the Japanese tea ceremony. And they were talking about how, you know, that this is a very rigid ceremony with very particular rules that you follow in exactly this precise way. And the reason is that when there are mishaps, it, that's what creates this unique experience and the beauty of the ceremony. Because this time your sleeve accidentally brushed the cup. Or this time it didn't get set exactly in the center. It's off a little bit. And so this is the way of noticing the beauty and the uniqueness of that experience. And I didn't know that before. And that is where this beauty lies in imperfection really resonated with me. And I just went back to my studio and I painted it in huge letters on the wall, you know, so that I really would remember that and, and get myself off into that direction. My dad was a photographer and a painter and um, we grew up on a farm. And so he had taken a picture of my brother, sitting and working on a project. It was a time of poverty. So his, you know, his hat, his straw hat had a hole in it. The barn in the background's kind of fallen down, needs to be painted. Years later, when my dad painted a picture of the photograph he had taken, he corrected all of those things. The hat no longer has a hole. The barn is straight, it's well painted, nothing needs repair not an interesting painting at all because all of this wonderful character and imperfection is gone from it it's just bland you know the photograph is so much more interesting to look at because of the uniqueness of the worn hat and the worn um, barn and the worn tennis shoes you know things like that so 
Beauty lies in imperfection. This has been a great interview. Um, I'm a little blown, well, I'm very blown away because um, you have some very different thoughts and yet it resonates with some of what I know about um, people who are creative in that process. And so I'm anxious to go back and, and look at what you've said more carefully. Thanks for joining in today. I'd love to hear your ideas about these topics. Do you have a creative work that you feel especially proud of? Are there times you've shared your personal story in your work and it has resulted in a rewarding connection with someone else? What's your biggest lesson in creativity? What have you learned? Are there times that things haven't gone exactly right and the results maybe are more beautiful than if they had? I've really enjoyed reading your thoughts about creativity, so I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. I'll see you there.